The president is back in Washington this morning after a late stop in Phoenix to drum up the Latino vote. As I said that this is supposed to be a roundtable, but it looks like a rally. Great, great business people. Uh, you have to be very sharp when you deal with the Hispanic Americans. Uh, my Latinos, I love the Latinos. Later today, the president is hosting the leaders of Israel, Bahrain, and the United Arab Emirates, the nation signing a peace agreement normalizing relations between the countries. The president calling it a historic breakthrough as he looks to position himself on the world stage ahead of November's election. We're joined now by White House senior advisor Jared Kushner, who helped broker that deal. Jared, good morning to you. It is a big day at the White House. The president signing these Abraham Accords, which will normalize relations between Israel, Bahrain, and the United Arab Emirates. We haven't seen a peace deal like this since 1994 with Jordan. Do you expect other countries, namely Saudi Arabia, to follow suit? Well, I think what you're seeing now is the beginning of the end of the Israel-Arab conflict that's been going on for a long time. And America has had uh, a lot of expenditures in the Middle East. We've had a lot of troops. We've had a lot of our, our, our money and our attention focused there for the last 20 years. But this really signals the beginning of the president bringing people together. A lot of people said when President Trump was elected that he'd be bringing war and chaos. But what he's bringing today is peace. And, you know, thanks to the efforts here, the President Trump has been nominated now for two Nobel Peace Prize for New, two Nobel Peace Prizes for his efforts, and we're seeing these countries come together. Uh, it's been very well received in the region. We're seeing a lot more countries saying, we're tired of the fighting, we want to move forward, and thanks to President Trump's leadership, we're really seeing this start to come together in the Middle East. Jared, that's a big statement, the beginning of the end of the Arab-Israeli conflict. How do you get Palestinians to the table, though? That's at the center of the issue, and those larger trouble spots, whether it's borders, the future of Jerusalem, the settlement, that's not addressed by this agreement. Agreement. Yeah, well, those issues aren't as complicated as people have made them out to be. President Trump's motto has been peace through strength. And by being strong and by building alliances and by doing what he thinks is right and not pandering or lecturing, he's been able to bring people to the table to do things they haven't done before. We can't want peace more than other people want peace. And I think that American diplomats in the past have been too eager for deals. President Trump doesn't chase deals. He makes deals when they're ready, but he will engage. A lot of people told him not to spend time on the Middle East. They said that you don't make money betting on success in the Middle East. President Trump said this is essential. We have so many troops there. Uh, he'd like to bring our troops home to America. He'd like to end these wars. And so he, he, in, he in tried to do it. And he took a different approach than people took. And it's working. So with regards to the Palestinians, I think with time that will come. But what you're doing now is bringing people together. And so they have a territorial dispute with Israel. But the reality is, is this opens up uh, the Al-Aqsa Mosque to Muslims uh, from throughout the world who can now travel through Abu Dhabi or Bahrain uh, to go to Israel and visit the mosque. So this will hopefully reduce tension in the region, bring people closer together, and long-term make the Middle East much more stable. Jared, you have a big portfolio, Middle East peace and the coronavirus. Let's talk about that. Front of minds in a lot of Americans' uh, mind this morning, especially with their kids going off to school wearing masks. And yet here was the scene yesterday and earlier over the weekend at, a, at the president's rally and event in Arizona and Nevada. You don't see much social distancing. You don't see many masks. What kind of message does does that send? Look, President Trump believes that people can make their own decisions. We've put out guidance for how people should follow. Uh, most of the president's events have been outdoors. We wanted uh, one of the events in Nevada to be indoors, but the governor, uh, everywhere we went, threatened to pull liquor licenses from people who uh, would give us the venue, so we were forced to go indoors with that event. But the reality is, is we've seen cases come down tremendously over the last uh, month. Uh, we're seeing deaths starting to really come down. A test positivity rate, I just looked at the numbers this morning for the last week, is under 5% at 4.5%. We're making tremendous progress on the vaccine, <laughs> okay. so we have... Yeah, fair sorry. enough, and the vaccine is super important, but until we have a vaccine, the public health message has been super clear. Wear a mask, stay socially distanced, and don't crowd in indoor events, all three of which didn't seem to come into play. Personal responsibility is one thing, but the president's the president. Doesn't he have to send a message? Look, again, you know, we have to figure out how to live our lives to some degree as well. Uh, President Trump is not part of this uh, let's lock down, you know, for perpetuity. People want to live their lives. They want to do what they want to do. Uh, again, we're giving guidelines on how to do it safely. You know, we practiced all of the, the best uh, practices at the event with regards to having sanitizer and asking people to take the different precautions. But the reality is, is that if you're not in one of the areas where you have comorbidities or above a certain age, then you have a different risk profile. And so, uh, so again, I 
think that we're seeing right now. The president is, is leading uh, with regards to the virus. We're seeing it come down. Our economy is coming back very, very strong. We're leading the world in testing. And then we're, we're on our way to a vaccine, hopefully by the end of the year. And, uh, and that's looking very, very promising, which will allow us to get back to normal as a country. Let's talk about an interview I know you're well aware of. Bob Woodward, the, the Washington reporter, has taped an interview with the president. It just came out, but he, this was back on February 7th that the president said the coronavirus was airborne and deadly, five times more deadly than the flu. For the sake of time, I'm not going to play all the times after that where he downplayed it. He's acknowledged downplaying it after that. Do you think he should have leveled more with the American people about the danger of this coronavirus the minute he knew? Yeah, uh, the president was very forthcoming with the American people about what he knew and when he knew it. Uh, president Trump, obviously, he banned travel from China. He banned travel from Europe. This was an unprecedented pandemic. And as different facts evolved, the president informed the public. Uh, Dr. Fauci was on the record the other day saying that uh, the president was very transparent and he agreed with the way that the president uh, characterized things at the time. This was an iterative thing. But again, what's been very remarkable has been America's response to the virus, where we launched Project Airbridge. We brought all the PPE we needed. Uh, we figured out how to ramp up testing. Everyone who needed a ventilator got a ventilator. And so all the different challenges that people were hysterical about, whether it was governors or the media, uh, we worked with them very closely. And again, it was very good to have an entrepreneurial president who doesn't do things in a bureaucratic way. Uh, he ran to all the different problems. He ran into them. He confronted them seriously. And we cr created good solutions for a lot of them. I think this goes to the larger issue, and it matters when you're talking about public health, which is credibility. Credibility of the messaging, credibility of the messenger. This is an appearance by you on Fox and Friends on April 29th, saying the country was on the other side of the medical aspect of this. I'll roll the interview. And again, we're on the other side of the medical aspect of this, and I think that we've uh, achieved all the different milestones that are needed. So the, gov the government, federal government, rose to the challenge, and this is a great success story. You talk about hysteria. On the day you said that, Jared, there were 61,000 deaths. As we sit here today, there are 195,000 deaths. Subsequent to that, Arizona, Texas, Florida had major outbreaks. How do you explain that kind of statement in light of what's happened? Yeah, so again, the first phase of this was really what I would call a crisis phase, right? We didn't have enough resources to deal with everything that we anticipated could happen. Uh, at that point, we felt that we had all the supplies we needed in order to uh, allow people to live their lives in, in a somewhat restricted but decent way. And, uh, and we knew that the economy was going to start coming back as well. People in America are not made to be locked down. Uh, the president uh, obviously did the lockdown because we needed to slow the spread. But at that point, we knew that there would be spread. But we obviously asked people to keep with all the guidelines and to, to do what needs to be done to protect themselves in the appropriate way. But so, it wasn't a success story on April 29th, right? That was premature to say that. No, again, I think that we've risen to a lot of the challenges. Look, if you look at one of the biggest uh, challenges in Italy, you had people dying in hospitals because on gurneys because they couldn't get ventilators, right? President Trump said that he wanted to make sure that every American who needed a ventilator got a ventilator. You had people on the front lines, the healthcare workers, who are amazing heroes, basically saying that they weren't going to have enough PP&E to handle uh, the crisis. And again, we were calling the different hospitals, getting the, the materials directly to them. So we got everything that was needed to the, to the front line workers in the hospitals. This is an unprecedented pandemic, and again, we rose to the challenge as a federal government. We worked with the governors. Look, some governors performed better than others, and obviously history will look back and see who did uh, their job appropriately. But the federal government did what we needed to do to issue the warning, stop the travel. Uh, we advised people to shut down. We did. We gave people guidelines on how to open up. Uh, some people followed them. Some people didn't. And then obviously all the governors that needed materials, uh, we got them what they need. Not always what they asked for, but sometimes they were asking for things that weren't really realistic. And then, yeah. most importantly, from the federal government's point of view, at that point, we had fully funded Project Warp Speed. We were developing different vaccine trials. And again, the fastest vaccine ever to a phase three trial was 13 months in our history. Uh, we have three that are in phase four, uh, phase three trials now. Uh, one of them was in four months. The next one was in four weeks and, uh, and four months in one week. And we have others that are moving very, very quickly. So uh, yeah. we're quite optimistic that we're going to get through this thing, uh, obviously, in the best way possible. But this is an unprecedented challenge. And the president rose to that. That challenge. And, and, and last thing, uh, with the Woodward book, you are quoted at length as well in it, and one caught my eye. You said the most dangerous people around the president are, quote, overconfident idiots. And then it quotes you as saying, we've gotten rid of a lot of the overconfident idiots in the administration. Who are you referring to? 
Yeah, so he actually mischaracterizes uh, who I was referring to. Obviously, the people uh, that we had, some people from the campaign uh, who were in there who were uh, obviously always trying to tell the president with confidence without the real facts. Look, when we got to Washington, President Trump had never done this before. And I think it took him a while to figure out who are the right people that he wanted to have around him in his administration. But I think over time, he's really uh, figured out who was with him, who, who was really not on his agenda. And he's been able to use his agenda to help the American people. So President you were Trump not referring to, you were, I just want to be clear, because you, you just said, he, Woodward says you were referring to General Mattis, Tillerson, and Gary Cohen, an economic advisor. You're saying that's not who you meant. No, that wasn't clear. And, and again, he's got tapes of everything. I have tapes of everything. So that was never implied in that regard. But what I will say is that the president, President Trump now has phenomenal people around him, people who agree with his agenda. He did a trade deal with Mexico, trade deal with Canada, trade deal with China, trade deal with South Korea, trade deal with Japan. These are things that politicians talked about forever, saying that they wanted to fix their trade deals but never got around to it. President Trump has great people around him who've helped him enact it. Uh, before the pandemic, we had the lowest black unemployment in history, the lowest Asian American un unemployment, lowest lowest Hispanic unemployment, lowest women un unemployment. These are all things that happened because President Trump was able to you know, do it his way, not the Washington way. He took on uh, the system and he was able to figure out how to deliver great results. And he did that because he surrounded himself with good people, people who challenge him, people who challenge each other. But ultimately, he was able to drive things through, uh, get good facts and make the right decisions. Uh, well, I, I got to leave it there because I know you got another date this morning. White House Senior Advisor Jared Kushner, it's good to have your time this morning. Great Thank to you be so with much. you, Savannah. Take care. Thank, Thank you. you.